esta es noche, como está. habíamos dicho, tenemos un invitado internacional muy conocido en el ámbito de la FGC de a nivel global, a nivel mundial, cuando se habla de Street Fighter V. Ha sido un poco controversial en momentos y en otras ha sido como un hermano para nosotros, ya que se ha, se ha, eh, se ha ligado mucho, ha estado muy compenetrado con la Liga Dominicana. So, vamos a darle la bienvenida al invitado de la noche de hoy para que comparta con nosotros una entrevista exclusiva para aclarar en cuarentena. So let's welcome, introducing one, the one and only, a guest from the international FGC, Street Fighter player, Street, Four, Street Fighter 4 player, very close, very friendly, very, very close to the Dominican Republic FGC. He main skin in the Street Fighter 5, main skin in the Street Fighter 4, and he's one of the third of the Kane Trinity. Yeah. Uh, with the two other will be like Julio Fuentes and Brenti School. Uh, number one, first place in Never Give Up 2018. Number three in so-called so regionals 2018. Number one in the Dominican Republic in the Game, on, Game Over Tournament 2018. Ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros, esta noche, tonight, we have the one and only Chris Tatarian. Bienvenido, Chris Tatarian. Hey, thanks for Aclarado having me. Man, thank, you. thank you, thank you. Gracias. Muchas gracias. Right, so welcome yeah. to Aclarado en Cuarentena one more time. My name hey, is thank, thank Jorge Pau. Boy. Thank you. Thank you for having me on, guys. I appreciate that. So la primera pregunta que tenemos para Chris es que cómo fueron sus inicios en los videojuegos y cómo él se inició, cómo se introdujo a los juegos de pelea. So Chris, how were your beginnings in video games and how did you get into fighting games? You know, my my earliest memories of life ha have involved video games. You know, one of my earliest memories of life is actually playing Street Fighter II for the first time. Um, I'm not really sure how old I was. I know that I was a, a young kid and that my older brother had brought home Street Fighter II on Sega. And I remember, um, I literally just remember the image of the character select screen, right? And I remember okay. ho hovering over Ryu. But my older brother, since he's the older brother, he gets to choose the character first. So he wanted to play with Ryu, you know, you know, the culture, you know, the culture. So, <laughs> so once he chose Ryu, I, I just remember I, I go down and I see Ken and I just hit the button and there it is. From that moment on, Ken was my favorite character. And uh, I, I was maybe like three years old, three, four years old. And then throughout my life. Um, fighting games have always been like a small aspect of it when I was a young kid. I always loved playing video games like Mega Man X4 was my favorite video game growing up. Um, I, I always played video games, but I never really started getting into fighting games until my 14th birthday. Um, I would play Mortal Kombat here and there. I have memories of King of Fighters 98 when I was a kid, like back in the arcades. Um, but what I really liked playing as a kid was shooting games like Call of Duty. Okay. Yeah, I was really, really crazy on Call of Duty 4 when it was out. Um, and then I remember one of my friends on my friend list who was playing Street Fighter 4. And I was like, oh, I remember Street Fighter. You know, I, I seen the Street Fighter 2 movie and I used to play Street Fighter 2 back with my you know, brother. And then I told him if it was good. And he was like, oh, man, this game is amazing. This and that. I'm like, okay, you know, let me get it. And um, there's a whole story about that as well on how I picked up the game and started playing Street Fighter. But just my early upbringing in life, there was video games, you know, like crazy. Like, I, I, I don't know how to describe mm -hmm. it. Everywhere. Yeah, like my, old, my older brother loved video games, but I was the, like, I was crazy about video games, man. They just, I don't know what it was that attracted me so much. I just loved being able to be immersed inside of something like that, you know? Okay. Out of the world. Sí, sus, los recuerdos más vívidos de Chris... Eh, están relacionados a los videojuegos, en específico a Street Fighter 2. Su hermano llegó un día con un Sega y Street Fighter, y él recuerda en la selección de caracteres haber visto los personajes y eh, tener a Ryu en, en pantalla, pero como su hermano mayor era el que había traído la consola y eso, pues él no podía utilizar a Ryu también. Así que cuando dio al botón abajo y estuvo sobre el carácter de Ken, automáticamente, vamos a decirlo así, se casó con Ken. Eh, los, los videojuegos eh, son algo de mucho interés para Chris. Él estuvo eh, 
jugando videojuegos, eh, en específico de Street Fighter, desde los cuatro años más o menos, pero él siempre ha jugado otros videojuegos, habló de jugar, de que tiene memorias, por ejemplo, de que Mega Man X4 es su juego favorito de la infancia, menciona el hecho de que eh, tiene memorias de haber estado muy involucrado en, en Call of Duty Modern Warfare, que era muy bueno en ese juego, y un amigo suyo le dijo, bueno, pero eh, aquí está Street Fighter 4, y él le dijo, oh, sí, recuerdo Street Fighter 4, y qué tal, le dijo, bueno, este juego es muy entretenido, muy... Bueno, le digo, pues préstamelo. Y de ahí en adelante ya lo otro es historia. Menciona otro juego también como los arcades de Mortal Kombat y de Kino Fighters. Y él dice que para él, o sea, el significado que tienen lo, los videojuegos como nosotros que somos gamers es algo en lo que él, con lo que él se identifica y se siente sumergido en este mundo. Your, your memory sería... is amazing. You were able to remember all that and translate the entire thing. That's crazy. <laughs> Thank you. But... You know, you, you just speak up the details and you highlight it i got you um, <laughs> i've actually Thanks. said this story uh, this specific story i've said it quite often but it's very important it's a very very important part of my journey with with video games and just street fighter in general and my mm -hmm. fighting game career because on my 14th birthday i mean I, i was a kid you know the only thing that i would ask for is video games like i would only get a video game Uh, on Christmas and for my birthday. I, I didn't ask for money. I didn't ask, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay. just get one game for, for the year and, or two games for the year. And um, I, I r literally remember going to Best Buy to buy Street Fighter 4. But my older brother, we both love uh, football. So, yeah, I got to say football. So mm -hmm. we, we both love football and we uh, love playing the game Pro Evolution. It's a, it's a football game. Mm -hmm. and uh he wanted to buy that game he wanted me to buy that game so we could play that together and um you know after after listening to him i ended up grabbing that pro evolution game and wanting to go get that game but i swear bro like i'm i walk past street fighter 4 in the aisle and i look at it and i kid you not man like i really believe that I heard a voice in my head that told me to get the game. Like it was crazy. <laughs> it I, was I, like it magic. Crazy. Yeah. I literally, I literally believe that God was telling me to to play that game because because how much of my life changed afterwards. It was. I haven't felt like. Um, how do you say? Like you know, we're we're drawn to a lot of things in life. You know, certain mm -hmm. things that have we just we're drawn to it. We feel a certain type of energy towards it. Sometimes. Yep you can't really explain that energy, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's in different aspects of life, you know? And you would never expect to feel something like that for like a video game, like a calling, you know, something mm -hmm. that's I know. pulling you towards it. And I, I remember as a kid feeling that feeling like, oh shit, like, like, I, like I'm literally hearing a voice in my head telling me to buy this game, buy this game. You're not going to regret it, buy this game. And I'm like, I, I, I'm like, okay, you know? I have the Pro Evolution game in my hand. I go to the cashier and then everything is pulling me back to Street Fighter 4. <laughs> Every, like I'm literally feeling like a magnet is like pulling me back. <laughs> and and at the last second, bro, like it's on the it's on the counter like he she's going to swipe it. I literally grab the game and I just run oh, run <laughs> go grab street fighter 4 come back and my dad's like all oh, mad at me like is this the game you want what you're wasting time you know like don't, don't waste all time. right okay just get what you want so great I story the, i got the game and that's you know my life changed from it it's kind of crazy sí. una historia que quiere contarnos chris eh, que es muy importante para él eh, de cómo él se introdujo a, a street fighter 4 él dice que eh, él recibía regalos eh, como todo niño, ¿verdad? Pero a sus 14 años, siempre lo que quería era videojuegos. Le hacía, él pedía videojuegos para Navidad y videojuegos para su cumpleaños. Eran dos juegos seguros al año. Fue con su hermano mayor a la tienda de Best Buy y como ellos eh, son amantes del fútbol, iban a comprar los juegos eh, Pro Evolution, que es un juego de, so de, de, de fútbol. Y el hermano quería que él lo comprara también para poder jugarlos entre ellos. Y él dice que él pasó... Eh, por el, se puede decir por el mostrador donde estaba Street Fighter 4 y él sintió algo que le dijo compra de Street Fighter y él todavía tenía la Pro Evolution en la mano y fue al cajero y él dice que él sintió esa conexión que hay cosas en la vida con la cual tú te sientes conectado que tú sientes como que algo te habla que te llega una voz y está, esto sucede en diferentes aspectos de la vida a él le pasó con el juego y cuando él llegó a la, donde la cajera para pagar se embaló corriendo, soltó la Pro Evolution y trajo el Street Fighter 4. El papá le estaba reclamando, oh, este es el juego que tú quieres, va a perder tu tiempo en eso. Pero es, es 
es épico la forma en que él se introdujo, porque él dice que en su mente algo le decía, coge Street Fighter, esto va a cambiar tu vida, no te vas a arrepentir, y ahí está, porque eso, Street Fighter 4 ha significado mucho para él, por lo mucho que él hizo que su vida cambiara como videojugador. Muy interesante esta historia, muy bonita, esta reseña que nos hace Chris de su vida. Bueno, vamos a pasar a la siguiente pregunta, y vamos con Jorge Pop. Sí, bueno, la próxima pregunta es, en, en su vida como competidor, ¿cuál ha sido la situación más difícil que él ha tenido que enfrentar? So, Chris, the following question is, in your life as, as a competitor, what has been the most difficult situation you have had to face? <laughs> oh, man, you know what's crazy is, I want to be able to answer this question fully, but the problem is, is that there's too much shit that is inside of the situation that I have dealt with. So I can't fully disclose all of the information, right? But what oh. I can say is that I think most professional fighting game players would agree with me when I say that the life of a professional fighting game player is difficult from the start. Like when you are trying to make it big from when you do make it big and you start getting sponsors and things like that, people... I think um, a lot of people have this false sense of understanding of what it means to be a professional fighting game player. Like I'm not getting, starting off the bat, I'm not getting paid like a Call of Duty player, like a League of Legends player, like a Dota player. You know, we're not yeah. making six figures. We're not getting thousands and thousands of dollars. Like we're, you know, and I'll get into that as well. But every single year has, let's just let's just say from the start of 2016, because we're in the Street Fighter V era. Yeah. Okay. Let's say from the Street Fighter V era, every single year has been a struggle, man. Every single year has been situations where you find yourself like, oh, shit, like, you know, if I go to this tournament, I might not have this much pocket money in my hand and this isn't that. I'm still going to college at this time. The most difficult time, though, was 100% 2018. That was by far the most hardest mental, like, mountain that I had to climb over just so I won't break down. And there was a lot of moments where I could have broken down, but it was the most difficult year um, for me mentally because of everything that could go wrong was going wrong. In the meanwhile, as I was trying to qualify for Capcom Cup and try to live out this dream that I had for so long, you know, it, it was just, it was a brutal, brutal year for me. And, um, you know, it's something that you learn, uh, you learn a lot about life when you go through very difficult situations like that. And I'm blessed to have been able to go through that situation and come out the man that I am today, you know? Okay. Yep. Excelente. Chris dice que obviamente hay demasiadas cosas que se dieron en su vida para él poder resumirlas. Eh, fueron demasiados los factores que determinan lo que representa las dificultades que él tuvo que enfrentar en su vida, o que, está, o que enfrentó y seguirá enfrentando como jugador profesional. Pero él menciona que desde los inicios de lo que es la percepción de la gente, de lo que es un pro player, de estar firmado, de tener que ir a torneos, del gasto, etc. Es, es, una, es una, un sacrificio tras sacrificio para poder lograr las cosas. Y él menciona que para ser práctico ¿no? y hablar de la era de Street Fighter V, a partir de 2016, cuando él está entregado en, en eh, resaltar y salir de, de, lo de, de, de su nivel y llegar a ser un, un jugador realmente profesional, empiezan todas las dificultades económicas porque él estaba yendo a la universidad a la misma vez que estaba asistiendo a estos torneos y que un jugador de, del FGC no recibe tanto dinero como lo reciben los jugadores de otro tipo de juego como Call of Duty, como Fortnite y otros tipos que tienen unos patrocinios de hasta seis figuras o bueno, de seis, seis cifras, cifras sí. seis cifras y, y es un poquito cuesta arriba para los jugadores de, de fighting que tienen si tienen algún patrocinio son cifras menores que cubren ciertos gastos pero muchas veces hay que bandeársela y él, a veces que había que tomar esa decisión de bueno, si voy a este torneo ¿qué, con qué dinero cuento para yo poder seguir adelante y todo ese esa arti retajila de cosas por la que él tuvo que pasar, específicamente eh, el año más difícil a, a su entender fue el 2018, porque fue en el año en el que él tenía las mayores dificultades. Y como dicen los rubios, when it rains, it pours. O sea, que como dicen los buenos dominicanos, 
eh, se le estaban cayendo todos los palitos juntos, porque sí. todo lo que puede salir mal, salió mal. Salió mal. Él aún así estuvo tirando para adelante y gracias a esos sacrificios y a él escalar la montaña más alta, como dice él, esa es la montaña que tuve que escalar para convertirme en el hombre que hoy soy, es la demostración de, de lo que, de los sacrificios que hay que hacer cuando uno se dedica a esto. Así que ese es prácticamente el resumen de lo que dijo Cristian Tarian Paso. Con Muy bien, Jorge. Noche. Just to, uh, just to add a little bit, if I may, um, because the the pro tour, for example, it, it brings a lot of stress on a player that wants to qualify for Capcom Cup. Like if you don't have the ambition to qualify for Capcom Cup, then you're not really stressing about going to this tournament and that tournament and that tournament and then studying players and then, you know, beating and then, oh, I just lost this tournament. I almost made top eight. I could have gained like at least one point. You know, and then you start, yeah. you go back to the hotel room and you're, you know, mentally distraught and then you got to fly to a different place. And then, and then this is also especially more difficult for people that are also doing school for full, for uh, full time as well. Or if you have a full time job, but I'm just using school as an example because I was in school full time. So I would go to a tournament and then I would have to come back to reality, which is I'm trying to strive for a degree in chemistry and I'm, I got a lot of homework. I got a lot of exams that I got to study for. And then I know that the next tournament is coming up in three weeks and I, I don't have time to put into this and then I don't have time to put into that. And you're just getting pulled from each direction, you know, and, and then you start questioning like on top, on top of every, all of that, right. Then you, uh, obviously I'm not going to name any names here, but then you have situations where, you have an agreement with an organization and then they just call you one day and they're like, bye-bye. And then we're good. All right. Yeah, we're good. Mm -hmm. Like, all right. Um, you know, we uh, can't really Best of uh, luck in your next adventure. Exactly. And then they click the phone and you can't really do anything about it. You're like, Oh shit. Well, there goes the money that I thought that I was going to get. So why mm -hmm. am I even, and then people say, Oh, like don't play for the money or something, but bro, I'm putting hours and hours and hours of my time yep. and my energy and my mental into something that I know I can achieve. The money's part of it, but the, you know, the qualification and, and competing that that's, it, it, it's all of it, you know? Yep. And when you go through situations like that time and time and time, and again, it just beats you down mentally, bro, because you, you start feeling like, damn, nobody fucking cares, bro. Like nobody cares about your dream. Nobody cares. If you want to make Capcom Cup, it's all about can you make them money? And for fighting game players for a long time, it's better now, but for a long time, um, our our community has not uh, been much profitable for sponsors. You know, that's mm -hmm. why you've seen yep. that's why you've seen a recent drop of how many godlike players have been dropped yep. as of recent, you know, in just the past two years. Sure, there's been some pickups, but there's also been some crazy drops, and you just wouldn't expect that from you know, from how good these players are and, uh, and how much they can provide. But it's just, it's a hard journey to make for somebody that wants to devote so much of this into their life, you know? Mm -hmm. So if you, you know, that, that's what I'd have to say about that. And obviously there's so much more detail behind that and the details that I can't even go over, but it's not like a, it's not just the advertisement of the CPT. You could win $250,000 and you know, like it, Bro, that yeah. shit, it, it, you, there's so much, there's, yeah, there's so a lot behind much it. behind yeah. the scenes that people don't even see because they just see the glitter and the glam and, oh, this person's this and uh, commentators and professional players. And I'm like, bro, you don't understand. You don't understand the amount of, the amount of evil people behind the scenes and not just like fighting games, but just in this entertainment industry, how much, how much evil is behind it and how much they want to just use you. Yep. Okay. Excellent. So, eh, le suma a Krista Tarian a la intervención de que realmente cuando se trata de lo que es competir y de hacer esto, los sacrificios que uno hace no precisamente siempre son bien vistos porque la presión que tú te pones encima cuando tú llevas una vida aparte de lo que es convertirte en un pro player, cuando tú tienes, en el caso del diesel, menciona el, el, la universidad porque era lo que le estaba haciendo, le estaba intentando conseguir su título en química y estaba haciendo todo el esfuerzo. Entonces él hacer estos viajes, hacer la presión, la cuestión del dinero, pero cuando eso pasa, tú tienes que montarte en un avión y arrancar para atrás, volver a la realidad donde que tú juegues Street Fighter realmente no le importa a nadie porque tú lo que está aquí en la universidad, eso no tiene nada que ver. Usted es pro player allá, pero aquí usted es simplemente Juan Pérez. Entonces, esa, esa, esa cantidad de presión cuando tú estás calificando, porque el objetivo 
y era lo que él mencionaba, si tú simplemente estás jugando por jugar y tú tiraste un par de torneitos y te ganaste, bueno, pues fantástico. Pero cuando tú, en tu mente tu objetivo final es clasificar a la Copa y tú lo que estás pensando es en cuántos puntos yo saqué aquí, que si pude llegar en el noveno me tocaron cinco, pero que quedé en diez porque me falló ese Hadouken y entonces te vas para la habitación a mortificarte, que es que la hice mal, que mierda, que cómo lo hago. Y ahora de todas formas tiene que agarrar y montarte en un avión y darle para atrás porque tiene que dedicarle tiempo a, tu, a lo que sea que estés haciendo, sea un trabajo de tiempo completo, sea la universidad. Entonces, eh, la gente decía de que, bueno, no lo hagas por el dinero, no te metas esa presión. Sí, pero aunque yo no quiera hacerlo por el dinero, el dinero es parte de lo que yo estoy haciendo porque por yo supuesto. estoy dedicando mi tiempo, que puedo dedicarse a otra cosa. Se lo estoy dedicando a esto, mi empeño, mi mente está totalmente en esto porque yo quiero maximizar mi capacidad como jugador. Entonces, en medio de todo esto, llega el sponsor de cualquier cosita y te dice, mira, qué pena, eh, gracias, te deseamos suerte en tu próxima aventura eh, profesional. Y ya pasó, no hay pataleo porque ellos son los dueños de su firma. Entonces, el dinero con el que tú estabas contando para tú entonces valerte de eso y poder cumplir ciertas metas, te dicen, bueno, ahora, ahora ya no está. Ahora entonces tú tienes que seguirte lavandeando porque tu sueño sigue siendo clasificar al CAC con Pro Tour, pero ya tú no tienes un sponsor. Entonces lo que él decía es que la gente, obviamente, en la pantalla, tú lo que ves es el glamour y el brillo y toda la vaina, pero detrás de bambalinas se dan muchísimas situaciones que al final lo que hay mucha gente que quiere aprovecharse de, de los pro players y de situaciones, porque detrás de todo negocio del entretenimiento siempre hay intereses y esos intereses van a jalar para su lado y no precisamente van a ser el lado tuyo, así que cuando tú estés en el medio de sus intereses eh, lamentablemente te van a pisar y él así fue víctima y obviamente aunque dice que no va a entrar en detalles ni a mencionar ningún nombre, pero se dieron muchas situaciones desagradables que él de todas formas pudo eh, superar como profesional, pero es prácticamente lo que quería agregar en ese sentido eh, adelante Robert Chan Hello Chris, I'm Robert Chan here, What's going on, Robert And the next question is, uh, I'm going to say in Spanish first. Eh, bueno, la, la siguiente pregunta que tenemos para Krista Tarian es que últimamente no lo hemos visto eh, participando muy activamente en los eventos de Street Fighter V, los eventos online. Eh, o sea, ¿qué está pasando con esto? So, uh, Chris, lately we have not seen you being very active in participating in the Street Fighter Five events of, online. What is happening with that? Well, <laughs> I mean, uh, there, it's just online three sucks. letters. It's just three letters. You already know what those are. C F N can't yeah, fucking C -F -N. kind of. They had code in the house. So uh, I, I definitely uh, understand um, what you're asking, and I think that. I think a lot of it for me weighs so heavily on the online experience because let me give you an example. Like my character, Ken, is all about hit confirms. Yep. Everything is a hit confirm with my character. If I mess up a hit confirm, I lose the round because of it. You know, all it takes is one low forward into EX Tatsu that's misconfirmed because of an online, online rollback or yep. some medium kick roundhouse doesn't something happens with our back strong fierce there's a little you know and that's happened so many times that it's just the the point is also that okay let's exclude local type of tournaments let's just focus on cpt okay let's just focus on cpt for example there is only one event this year for uh north america west there's only one event right That nope. I only have. There's, I don't, there's two, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, two, two, two events yeah, yeah. for North America West. Okay, yeah. Two, two chances to qualify for Capcom Cup, and I'm going up against everybody online. Yep. Only two chances, and this isn't just American West, as in like directly in SoCal. This is SoCal, NorCal, Seattle, God knows where else. It's all of that section, and sometimes the connection is not good. I look at it like this. Why would I stress out on practicing so much with a character that I don't even like because I'm not going to win with Ken this season? Exactly. You need mm -hmm. Why would for I a backup so for easy applications and everything? And and spend more hours again learning this character and learning matchups and then just for me to have two chances to qualify for Capcom Cup and if I don't get those two chances then that's it. So if I compete in that two chances, 
then I'm setting myself up to believe that, okay, man, I might be able to win this online tournament, qualify for Capcom Cup again. Oh my God. But then you go up online and you realize, oh God, it's online and like shit can go wrong <laughs> online. And, and I, can't, I can't control it. You know, like as much as I want to win, yeah, I can't yeah. control the environment that I'm playing in. And yep. because the environment that I'm playing in is not controllable, then it seems foolish to me to invest my energy and my time. The most important thing a man has on earth is what, bro? Time. time. That's it. If I invest my time into practicing, I don't care about winning a Wednesday night fights anymore, bro. I have one more Wednesday night fights than I can even count. Than anybody has one Wednesday night fights. I don't need to win Wednesday night fights anymore for me to prove I'm still good or anything like that. You, you get what I'm saying? So I don't yeah, really enter really Wednesday point. night fights like that anymore. I mean, uh, if I enter it, like I entered the 2v2 with Danny Fame, we got to grand finals and like I hadn't even played in two months and he did all the work, you know, I, I won like okay. a couple of matches, but the thing is like, it's just, it just doesn't seem worth it for me to put and invest so much time into the online environment and also because I don't really enjoy playing other characters the way that I enjoy playing Ken. So it's just, it's not even like, it feels more like a chore. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. It just mm -hmm. feels more like, oh, you just got to do it, you know? Because you know how people be too, man. Like, oh, just because I haven't played in, the, in a little bit of time, uh, if you beat me all of a sudden, oh, you know, just be crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, bro. And they're going to do the highlights <laughs> on YouTube and everything. You know, yeah. you, you, you know what I'm saying, bro? It's yeah. like, it's just not even worth it to me. And I feel like I can put my time into something that makes it more enjoyable for me. You, you, yeah. you understand? Okay. Like, You're absolutely it's not, right. You can only, I don't know about you guys, bro. I don't know about you guys, but I can only play online for maybe about 45 minutes to an hour before my mind just like, like snaps before I'm just like, I can't, this, I can't do this. You're That's not the only one. Much. No, yeah. no, you're not the only one, but we have Robert Chan here. We plays like eight hours a day. He's, <laughs> he's the... I don't know how. You know, he's the most know. prolific. He's the most prolific no. game that we know. And, Come on. Uh, he, 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 he doesn't beat anybody. Don't no, no. Beat him no, no. Really no. Bad let, let, line. He just Jorge, let's say, uh, let's say that he's on. playing actually six hours, not, not eight. Okay, six. six. He's okay. playing six. Yeah. But and see, we know he's better known <laughs> as, as Latin Daigo. Latin American Daigo. Daigo. Just for you okay. to know. Not okay, because he's good. You. It's just because of his charisma. Not because it's good. You. Because yeah. it sucks. Because of popularity. Game. My my focus my focus isn't on like you know there there are some really good tournaments like the ones uh, Punk hosts. Yeah yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. Like Beta Bash. He, he has a lot of money in it and whatnot. That yeah. that's understandable. And maybe I could start entering that. But I don't. You have to be realistic with yourself. You know like. I don't put as much time as I used to into the game. So it would be foolish for me to think that I would get the similar type of results. Yeah. Okay. When I and that would frustrate you time. even more. Exactly. Because why? I'm a competitor. It's in my blood. That shit boils. Yeah. If I okay. don't win, I'm pissed. I got to yeah. win. If I'm entering something, it's because I know I can win, you know? So it, it's, ma it's mainly my focus is on like, okay, anything that's Capcom Cup, Capcom Pro Tour related. And when I look at that, I'm, I just see two chances. Like, can I get random Mika, random birdied, random uh, Urian, <laughs> random oh, uh, yeah. Akuma, random Manat? I can Bison. run into Manat. I can run into Bison. I can run into uh, uh, God knows who else now. You know what I'm saying? There's just why do I? Why should I put myself through that mentally? You know? Yep. Yeah, it is. I just it's, don't it's, feel it's, a need to right insane. now. The, yeah. yeah, the change, the, the game has changed because in the past you do have a lot of opportunities to be earning yeah. points and then yes. being qualified for that. Exactly. Even though it was stressful in certain point was more relaxing because you do have several opportunities yes. and you can pick your battles. You're like exactly. I'm going to go to that one. Why? Pick and that right there, that right there, I'm going to go to that one. And that's exactly yeah. what I did when I chose the Dominican Republic back in 2018. Yeah. Why? Because I'm like, these motherfuckers know how to party. I'm down to come to this fucking country and party. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is the reason why I'm going. That. I don't know if I lose or win. That's, that's a lot down. of it. That's a lot of it, man. That It's the experience. It's going freaking making friends and just like going out partying and chill. Bro, the stories that I have in Dominican Republic are <laughs> crazy. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Bro, yeah, but you yeah. see what I'm saying? It's like that part yeah, is Yeah, but fun. that's PG-13. PG-13. I yeah. cannot maybe, disclose maybe, those stories. Maybe more. <laughs> maybe more. Rated R. Rated R. There you go. Rated um, R. 
but you get what i'm saying bro like there's there's the fun aspect of competing and when you're just stuck at home and you got to play in this like online it's just it's not the same environment man you we play we play fighting games with the homies we we you know that's what made it fun for me so i i I don't feel like i have look street fighter 5 has what a year or two left yep i feel like i don't have anything more to prove in street fighter 5 man like you know there's no, we feel your pain we feel your pain boy let's go with the me? translation now yeah. robert is going to help us out with that yeah, yeah, yeah. oh no all right so mira eh, decía crita tarian de eh, manera muy efusiva que realmente él ni hallaba por donde empezaba pero sabemos que el tema del net code es un problema pero eh, al igual que muchos otros pro players dicen que ahora mismo el objetivo es big money right lo, lo chelito 250 mil dólares, Capcom Cup, pero cada región tiene dos oportunidades solamente. Entonces, ¿qué es lo que él dice? Yo dedicarle mi tiempo a tratar de eficientizar lo que yo, mi nivel, como yo normalmente lo hago, para tener solamente dos oportunidades. Es demasiado estresante para la cantidad de recursos que yo voy a tener que dedicarle y estoy peleando contra el mayor problema que es la experiencia online por el hecho de que Ken es un carácter que es basado en buffer y confirmation, prácticamente el éxito de ese carácter es que si te aruña te muerde, pero si tú nada más lo aruña y nunca llega a morderlo, bueno pues hay un problema, porque cualquier errorcito realmente a Ken le cuesta fácilmente 350, 400 y él eh, pierde la mano por un simple error, aparte de que por su personalidad, como sabemos esos, ese tipo de falla de ejecución te pone a mil y te desconcentra. Yo, yo he ido cambiando, pero yo era uno de esos. Fallé un 360 y ya se me acabó el juego. Porque ya yo me empiezo a enfocar que por qué fallé, que si hubiese ganado, etcétera, etcétera. Entonces él decía que es demasiada la, la presión que tú te pones en ti mismo para poder clasificar en dos únicas oportunidades. Entonces hablábamos de la experiencia previa y el por qué cuando él lo hacía en los años que sí eran físicos, eran más viables. ¿Por qué? Porque tú tenías oportunidad de acumular puntos y tú tenías la oportunidad de elegir a dónde tú querías ir. Pero por la experiencia, no solamente por, por jugar. Y por eso fue que él dijo en el 2018, para allá que yo voy, para República Dominicana, porque yo conozco la gente, el ambiente, las experiencias. Sé sí, como los tigres vacilan para allá. Claro. Los tigres de una vez, que vámonos para Boca Chica, que, que las la guerras, que dónde están las yales. Entonces, él, él, eso es lo que él quería disfrutar, ¿no? Esa experiencia, cosa que se perdió con la pandemia, porque ahora todo el mundo está jugando desde tu casa, en la sala. Pero entonces él dice, ok, digamos que sí, que yo me pongo para eso. Y yo voy a enfocarme en tener que buscar un carácter secundario, porque mi carácter, que es válido en, confi- en confirmaciones, que es bueno, yo no voy a poder jugar con él, porque no voy a poder confiar en lo que hago. Porque yo estoy en medio de una cosita, hubo un rollback. Ah, que, ah, que hubo un lagueíto. Entonces, ¿qué voy a tener que hacer? Buscar un secundario. Entonces, se va a convertir más como en un mandado, más que en sí, disfrutarlo. que no me gusta, probablemente. Yo, un carácter que no me gusta. Un secundario para aprenderme los traques, para aprenderme el nivel, para tirar todos los códigos, la tecnología, para que al final hacerlo porque lo tengo que hacer nada más y que porque quiero clasificar. Y al final del camino, sé que me voy a encontrar con los Bison, con los Urien, con los Menai, con toda esa gente que tiene un reguero de porquería en línea que yo no voy a poder, porque yo soy una gente que puedo jugar 45 minutos, ya después de 45 minutos, ya yo estoy agotado mentalmente, porque es que eso, eso rol, aquí ese neco me pone loco, y yo realmente, simplemente ya no aguanto, cuando yo, yo tengo más de 45 minutos, ahí fue cuando dijimos entonces, que Robert Chan, que es un, un tolete, obviamente, 8 horas al día le dedica, ya Frank Hill lo bajó a 6, entonces, como Robert Chan lo bajó a 6, y se ha mantenido siendo la mona de traquea del, del grupo aclarado, no le gana a nadie, pero es mi hermano y yo lo llevo donde sea. Entonces, eh, le explicamos también a Crista Tarian de que Robert Chan es el Daigo de Latinoamérica por su carisma, no porque él sea buen jugador, pero por su carisma es el Daigo de Latán y es una persona que cuenta con el agrado de todo el mundo. Eh, y por agrado me refiero a que todo el mundo le quiere dar feo porque él habla demasiado. Entonces, esa es la fragancia de lo que dice nuestro hermano Chris. De todas formas, él dijo que él está viendo los torneos que está haciendo Punk y que lo ve interesante y que va a evaluar si pudiese hacerlo o no. Pero ¿qué es lo que él dice? Aún así yo lo haga, lo que está metido ahí son los toros. Y para yo llegar al nivel de los toros, tengo que meterle demasiadas horas para volver a llegar a mi nivel. Y eso es lo que él entiende. Él puede dedicárselo a una actividad que sea más placentera y que le, le dé menos dolores de cabeza 
y en las cuales él sí puede elegir sus batallas para disfrutarlas al máximo. Es cuanto. 